Okay, so we are tying the split back CDC Drunella nymph. Uh, I developed this pattern to imitate Drunella dodsi or lesser green drake nymphs that uh, inhabited a system that I was fishing a lot. We're going to tie this on a TMCO TMC 3761 barbless BL in number 10. We're going to put a little copper bead uh, that's appropriate for the hook size on there and lock that in the vise. I'm going to begin by putting some wraps of 0 0.025 lead free wire on just about five wraps enough to um, lock the bead in place i like these little um, essentially wire hackle pliers to to wrap this on uniformly i'll just kind of twist that off and then i'll i'm kind of exacting about it so i'm going to use my tweezers and, and my my flush cutters to trim that off and get it nice and nice and even on the hook before I lay down my thread base. The thread that I'm going to use here is a uh, unithread in six aught all I've done. The color doesn't matter that much. Go with um, some black or brown, even red if you want to kind of hot spot towards the front. But with the split back, you don't really need to hot spot more unless you really want to. So build up a little thread ramp. And then I'm going to wrap towards the bend of the hook. Stop just shy of the bend of the hook. The tail on this guy is also going to be the material that's used for the body. And it's going to be some about six or six to eight fibers. The reddish fibers are the ones that I favor um, from a pheasant tail. So we'll take the tips of that. Make some nice tailing fibers on the tips. Tie those in with a couple couple thread wraps make sure they're positioned nicely on the top of the hook there and I'll go ahead and put one more securing wrap over the top of that um, wrap my thread forward and here's where I'm gonna grab some Sculpin olive medium wire and a fairly good length is what I'm gonna cut off here because the wire the wire ribbing on this is pretty tight. We'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to tie in that wire on the side of the hook facing me. And it really needs to be on the side because we're imitating a Drunella and they're a crawler nymph. They have a flattened body. They're made for crawling around on the rocks and not getting swept up in the current. Um, so they have kind of a flat tapered body. We're going to go ahead, once we've got that wire wrapped in, the reason that I'm using the 6 aught Uni is that it builds bulk really fast, and I've got to build up a real tapered body. If you look at a natural of a Drunella Dodsai, you'll see that they're, they're fairly fat. They're a good-sized bug. I'm going to put a half hitch on there, and I'm going to go ahead and use my bobbin cradle at this point. Apologies in advance for the fact that I leave my bobbin cradle kind of almost in the way for a good part of this video coming up. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use the rotary feature on my vise to wrap those um, seven or eight uh, pheasant tail fibers forward. And I've got just enough fibers to really cover the abdomen the way that I want. So I kind of hold it in place like that with my finger because um, I'm really at the end of those fibers and get a locking wrap in place before I move my bobbin cradle out of the way and put some more securing wraps over the top of that. Really keeping the tension to make sure those fibers don't pop loose on me. So the longer the fibers that you can get off of your pheasant tail to do this step, because it's such a large hook, the better. Trim off a little bit of excess there. Okay, I'm just gonna lay down a few more thread wraps, kind of even things out up there. Um, where the thorax is going to go. And now I'm going to counter rib that wire forward, starting from the back. And I'm going to rib pretty darn tight, like basically just enough room between the ribbing wraps for that pheasant tail underbody to pop through. I want that sort of segmented look, but I, I want it to be pretty tight and that kind of fibrousness to sort of move a little bit between those wraps.
secure that down. Lock it in with about five or six crisscrossing wraps over that. And then I'm going to hold the bobbin tight, hold that thread tension tight while I helicopter off that medium wire. Okay, so now we're going to tie in material for the backing. First, I'm going to tie in some Vivas Cranberry Hollow, hollow Tinsel. And this is just a, a, it's a thin hollow tinsel, and this is just going to be the split back. Thus, we're going to tie it in first, and then we're going to tie in the Antron for the main back. So that then they can be folded over in the correct sequence. I'll secure that down. Now for the back, even though I'm going to cover this with some um, Gulf Nymph Brown, I like to use um, the brown Antron as a back. I'm going to double it, make a little loop of it so that I get a nice wide uh, wing case. I'll tie that in. And then we'll just leave those, both the hollow tinsel and the antron, in place while we do the next step. Get a couple wraps over the top of that. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and flattened down, and you know, so that when I pull it back over the top, that it's going to form a nice wing case. Leave a little bit of room before the bead so that when I trim it off and then put a couple more wraps in to secure it down that it's going to not overlap that bead but rather kind of sit down flush with it. You'll notice that on the thorax I built up already because I'm using the 6 aught uni a, a fair amount of bulk so I don't need a whole lot of this peacock ice dub that I'm going to start the thorax with here. Now sort of the trick here is that I'm going to do half of the thorax. I'm going to tie in a bit of the peacock ice dub and that's going to help to make the legs that I'm about to tie in pop so that they don't sit down flush with the body but really pop out from the body like legs would. So I've selected a couple of choice feathers from my bag of Trout Hunter Premium uh, Natural Dark Dun CDC. This stuff is great. I love it. But I still kind of just dump out like a, a little handful of feathers on my desk and then pick a couple that, that really suit what I'm trying to do. I'll tie one in at, a, at an angle, and then I'm gonna bring in another one and tie it in going the other direction at an angle. Get a couple wraps over the top of each one and adjust the length so that they're, they're looking like, you know, sort of like nymph leg length, not, not too long. Go ahead and trim off the excess there. And the excess on the other one. And then we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit more, uh, create a small dubbing loop, or dubbing noodle rather, again on the thread and finish off the thorax and even a little bit more dubbing. I want to make sure that the, the frontage of that thorax is nice and full. Not too much, but uh, create another little noodle and put a couple more wraps of dubbing on there. Okay, now I'm going to grab my Antron after I've kind of trimmed up some of the the fibers off of that peacock ice dub and made it a little bit cleaner. I'm going to grab that brown antron and pull it over the top, keeping it nice and flat so it forms a good um, wing case that sort of wraps a little bit over the top of that guy. Put a couple wraps over that and one in front should be good. I'm going to go ahead and clip off the excess on that. And just a few wraps there is fine because we're about ready to start hitting this with some Gulf Nymph Brown, the Natural Nymph Brown UV Resin to really lock it in place. 
and it'll give it a cool shine. There we go. So I've got my Gulf Nymph Brown. Yay. I'm so glad that fly fish food got some from Wapsie as soon as they got it in from Finland. The stuff is really cool. And I like to put a little dab on the tip of my bodkin. Now the first bit that we put on here, because we've got the Antron wing case, it's going to soak into the Antron fibers, so it's not really going to do a whole lot. Um, I like to turn on my, my UV light and have it sitting there ready, so that if my UV resin that I'm putting on starts to run, um, I can hit it with that light be before it runs into my dubbing or anything. So I always just like to have it kind of ready just in case. So I very carefully touch some onto the, the Antron, and then I'm just going to work it around with the tip of that bodkin. Like I said, it doesn't look like much yet because it's the first layer of that stuff soaks in, but we're going to hit that first layer with the, with the UV light, harden it, and then we're going to put on another layer of Nymph Brown that's, gonna, that's really going to start to build and, and form that wing case. I'll put a slightly larger blob of that on the tip of my bodkin here. That's more than enough, but that's okay. I'll show you how to not waste your precious resin in just a minute. So now again, repeating the process, I'm just going to very carefully kind of dab some onto there. And then I've got a little bit of excess on the tip of my bodkin, so I squeeze it to form a vacuum and then I release and suck that extra back into the to the bottle so I don't waste any. So I'm going to carefully work that around a little bit more. Make sure it's nice and even but not touching the dubbing below it. Hit that with the light a few more seconds. It's kind of a thicker layer, so I'm going to make sure that it's nice and hardened and hit it for hmm, a bit longer than I need to probably, but so what? Clean the tip of my bodkin. Get that brown goop off it. Okay, so now that we've got the, the nymph brown covering the top of that guy, we're going to pull the cranberry hollow tinsel directly over, like really well centered over the top of that wing case and this is sort of the the blood look of the the split case we'll just put a couple of wraps over that guy trim off the excess because we're going to put a little more uv resin over the top of this so i'm going to go ahead and whip finish now i just like to do a, a double you know two sets of three on the whip finish once we've got the whip finish in place and we cut off our thread then I'm going to finish the fly with a little bit of Loon UV Flow. And this is going to seal the deal and it's going to give it a nice shine. Um, it's going to really kind of make that uh, holographic tinsel refract a little bit from, from underneath of it. Get that light ready, especially with the flow because it, like it's called flow, it, flows around so in case it starts to run on me I want to be able to grab my light real quick and and hit it and freeze it in place so on this particular nymph being good size and all I'm I'm fairly liberal with the amount of loon flow that I hit the top of that with and then I'll seal it in place hit it with the light for a few seconds and then I'm gonna put on a little bit more and zap that as well. There you go, that's the split back version of the CDC Drunella Dodsai Nymph. And I love to kind of flare those, you know, pop those tails up a little bit to make them flare, you just kind of bend them upwards. I do hope that this pattern catches you a pile of fish. 
you like this video, go ahead and thumbs up it and be sure to subscribe. Tight lines.